Allow me for a few moments this morning to reflect upon these readings of scripture and our theme of stewardship under the heading, Returning Goodness for Goodness. Returning Goodness for Goodness. In their art, in their work, The Art of Dr. Seuss, publisher Robert Chase Jr. reflects on the power of the illustrations in the classic children's books by Theodore Geisel, who we more commonly know as Dr. Seuss. On one of the last illustrations for the book, Oh, the Places You'll Go, Chase comments on Geisel's art under the heading, Life's a Great Balancing Act, when he comments, This artwork is one of the last pages in Oh, the Places You'll Go. Here, Ted Geisel, Dr. Seuss, not only sums up his thoughts about life, but in many ways his thoughts about his own journey. The narrative Ted wrote on the accompanying page speaks boldly about life's great ups and downs, a notion he doesn't shy away from, and one that is clearly evident in the striking page. Ted's main character moves laterally across the Seussian landscape in a comfortable open space, as if balanced for whichever way life may take him. As people of faith, our experience of receiving a portion of the abundance and plenty of goodness that our Creator provides to us calls us particularly in this season of harvest to times of balance, to be conscious of our need to balance, but also to express our gratitude. I've said it before that Thanksgiving is where faith starts for me. The loving relationships of my family and friends who have nurtured my faith remind me of this. I also learned at an early age the importance of of saying thank you. In ministry, it's very important to tell each other how grateful we are for giving what we can to our church, whether it be time, talent, or treasure, as Tom has said. We also have to balance our energies in this life, how much time we offer our presence to others, how much of our resources we can offer, how much of our self-care we can park, say, over here, while we attend to this one other thing right here in front of us. I had this conversation with a friend of mine from high school this week, how the people we know or knew have changed so much, how we have to choose our boundaries with who we want to stay in touch with and who who is probably less healthy to stay in touch with, and those who we simply lose touch with. I remember them saying, Grant, I'm not judging, but, and I lost the rest of their sentence after that, I'm not judging, but, because I was stuck on that. Uh, And and I agreed with, with them to a point, but I replied, listen, who said anything about judging? We all judge, but I prefer to call it decision making. We have to choose where our energy goes from time to time. We have to make decisions for our own health and energy. We, as a people of faith, are called to return to goodness to return our goodness for the abundant goodness God gives us, always. Always be conscious of what God has supplied to us and be conscious of how we give back that same goodness in kind to all around us for the sake of good relationship and God's love for one another. This is one of the guiding principles of our lives of faith and it's one of the guiding principles of stewardship A group of us from Emmanuel United Church family have been called with gifts, skills, and talents to walk the path of providing stewardship leadership. And thank you to Tom for his leadership as well. Stewardship begins but with giving God thanks for each other. We're here, we're together, we have a lot to share, we give so much to each other, we have to give thanks for all that we share of ourselves, of our own lives. Stewardship is giving thanks for everything we have. Stewardship is giving God thanks for the call to share what we have for the sake of demonstrating our work towards equity among our human family. Stewardship is taking care of the earth that provides us with the resources we have. And stewardship respects that where our stuff comes from is harvested, provided, cared for and nurtured and birthed and created 
by all of us, by, by us who do not look like me or believe the same things as I do or express the same way as I do or give the same amount of labor as I do, whether it be physical, cognitive, social, emotional, or otherwise, how we provide for us this energy. Goods, services, time, and compassion are all balanced by our faith. By praying about it, by praying for our church, and continuing to commit to the ministries that we give, and there are many ministries at Emmanuel, coming from rural Newfoundland, Labrador, I can see how many ministries there are at Emmanuel. We are called to discern how we are a part of and continue to be our church, our gift for our future, and to live out our mission in God's creation and to love one another. Living out our mission means listening to and hearing our request to increase your pledge by about 5%, your pledge amounts by 5% over last year. As Tom said, this will maintain Emmanuel's operating budget of 2022 and ensure that our commitments and our needs in 2023 can be met. We all know this. The cost of everything has increased since COVID-19 and continues to rise in this time of economic recovery. And I often ask myself, will you please slow down, economy? Enough is enough. But one of the surprising outcomes of, of challenges for our people of faith is that when we are committed to our mission and our church and our gifts, we meet our goals. We make our decisions, we decide, we choose, but we meet our goals as people of faith. We don't just aim to attain certain numbers, larger numbers or quantities of capital. Instead, we look at it this way. It's a blessing what we do. It's a blessing who we are and an example to the wider church in God's world that we love one another by offering our ministry to God and letting the Holy Spirit move through us. The gospel of Christ is shown in our love as what we do for the love of our community and, and faith is love one another. I give you a funny illustration this morning to conclude my meditation. I offer you the words of David Roseberry from the Anglican Compass. In a piece entitled, Funny You Said That, Stewardship and Humor, Giving Part 3, he shares this bit of humor. There was once a strong man at a circus sideshow who demonstrated his power before large audiences every night. Toward the end of one performance, he squeezed the juice from a lemon between his hands. He said to the onlookers, I will offer $200 to anyone here who can squeeze another drop from this lemon. A thin older lady hobbled up the stage. She picked up the lemon and clamped it between her two frail bony hands. She squeezed and out came a teaspoon of lemon juice. <laughs> the strong man was amazed. He paid the woman the $200 but privately asked her, what is the secret of your strength? Practice, the woman answered. I have been treasurer of my church for 42 years. <laughs> Sounds like it, eh, Mary? <laughs> Let me close by saying the Stewardship Campaign 2022, Our Church, Our Gift, is our challenge. We are now called to discern how to continue in this changing time to keep being Emmanuel United into the future and to keep on loving one another. May God continue to create through us, may Christ continue to teach us, and may the Holy Spirit continue to keep on inspiring us this day with our church and our gift always. Thanks be to God. Amen.